welcome to this day. It is Thursday, June 13th. I am Michael Taylor. Welcome to the program. I hope you're having a great day. We're getting a little warm. We're getting closer to that warmer temperatures. We're going to talk about that in a minute on the, in the weather forecast. But first, I want to talk about what we have on today's show, and it's going to be a good one, folks. We've got the Golden Rain Foundation is going to be coming in, talking about an update. We have Joan Milliman coming in. We're talking about the IDs, the ID policies that's in place. We're talking about some new zoning stuff. And believe it or not, we're going to be talking about trees and the varieties that we have here and uh, what one group discovered about our trees, which is kind of an interesting story. So stay tuned for that. Lots of great updates there. But first, we want to tell you about another update. If you, if you want to go over to the United Town Hall, it's going on tomorrow. It's only a day away, as the song says. And so we have the United uh, Town Hall coming up, and the Mutual Board is inviting all United residents to come on over to the next monthly town hall meeting. It's going to be at 2 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to be at the Performing Arts Center in Clubhouse 3, Room 2. So make sure you get out there and let the folks on the board know what's going on in your community. It's one of the great ways that they like to come together and find out what residents are concerned with, what the needs are, and what they're doing right, and what they could do better. So get out there and enjoy that. Let's take a look at our weather forecast, and it is going to be a nice one. I'm telling you, the June gloom's still around, but it's already starting to break up here at our 9 o'clock hour, and uh, we're going to see some sunny skies today. Tomorrow, even warmer, and then Saturday, that's the real hot one. We're going to get up to 80 degrees. Haven't seen that in a little while right around here, so that's going to be nice. And then we get a little bit cooler as we go up and down, back and forth. But anyway, the May, the May gray June gloom pattern is still with us for a while, but we're going to have mostly sunny on Sunday. Sunday, so that should be nice too. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset. We got a great one. Cole Young, not only does he do sports, he takes great pictures. He also works behind the scenes, video edits. Is there anything Cole can't do? Well, I haven't found it yet. <laughs> he took this picture over the Grand Tetons over in Wyoming, and it's a great shot. Uh, sunrise this morning was 540. Sunset tonight, 802. If you'd like to send us a picture, well, you can do that as well. Just email us, LagunaWoodsVillageTV at gmail.com. Make sure you include your name and where you took the photo, just like Cole did, and we will use it on our Sunrise Sunset segment. Okay, we got a couple of meetings to tell you about, and then when we come back, we'll be talking to Joan Milliman from the Golden Rain Foundation. Stay with us. Well, at my age, I've seen a lot of things come and go. I served in the military. I've been in law enforcement for a career of 30 years. Recently, I've had pains and aches in my feet that have caused me to dread doing the things I love. I have a friend that told me about Rogue Owner Sports. I was met by a fit expert who walked me through the perfect fit zone. They measured my feet, did a 3D scan, watched how I walked, videotaped it, and showed the results. Turns out, I've been wearing the wrong size shoes for years. Now, with the right insoles and the right shoes, my feet are great. I no longer have the pain in my feet that I had. You know, at my age, oftentimes people ask me how old I am. I'm an old guy, but I gotta tell you, the key is staying active. And you gotta stay active in a pain-free way. With me, it's Roadrunner Sports for my feet. Cirque du Soleil presents Kuza, an adrenaline rush of acrobatics in a zany kingdom of characters. Kuza opens June 8th under the big top at Laguna Hills Mall. Kuza thanks its official partner, Air Canada. Save up to 25% on bookings of 10 or more. Tickets on sale at CirqueDuSoleil.com. Hi, I'm Vince Ferragamo. I spent some of my best years as an NFL quarterback, but today I've got a new team and we're helping seniors who spent their best years fighting for our country, defending our freedom and informing the nation. Our hometown heroes need help. AgeWell Senior Services is their lifeline. Nonprofit AgeWell can do all of this because you care enough to give. Please join me in supporting AgeWell. Donate today.
Golden Rain Foundation is always busy, lots of things on their agenda, and we want to welcome Secretary Joan Millam into our program again. Thanks for joining us. Nice to be here. And you guys have, uh, you guys are always busy, uh, but uh, some things are finally finalized. Um, you had a recent CEO update, uh, it was just uh, earlier this week, I believe. So right. what, uh, what's going on there? Well, two or three things I think are important. Uh, residents can now apply for full-time staff positions. Mm -hmm. And the other thing she mentioned was mutual elections are coming up right away. Right. So be sure you get your applications in from the corporate secretaries mm -hmm. on the second floor. Uh, and finally, the reservation lottery, the cards are due Monday, June 17th in the recreation office. Those of you who are in clubs and know about that will be right there. Right, and that's a big thing. That's the first for the whole next year. So uh, for folks who really want to have a, a special occasion, anniversary, birthday, that's an important one to maybe get in on, get in on right? Right. Not yeah. only that, but if you want your club meetings to go on and right. monthly or weekly <laughs> or even daily in some mm -hmm. cases, you need to make the reservation. Now, is this, now do you know uh, if this is with the presumption that the Clubhouse One will be open and ready to go in 2025? If Clubhouse One should be open the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. It right. will be. That's what the ad seems to be the timeline for September still, and that's still on, on course for that. They're still on. They're still on course. Okay, so <laughs> folks can get back in Clubhouse One for next year right. for all their meetings right. and all that good stuff. Fantastic. Um, what what's going on with the uh, committee appointments? Oh, we always update our committee appointments every month because the mutuals change and we change and people switch around, so that's why the committee appointments are. I just put in there's one of the things we did. Sure, sure. <laughs> now, talk a little bit about the committees. Um, you know, I think that's a that's a great way for folks who maybe don't want, don't want to maybe be a director yet or oh, aren't ready yes. for that to really kind of get the experience of what it takes to, you know, do the research, do the reports, and report to the directors and be part of what the decision-making process. Right, especially, and especially if you're going to run for one of the boards, you really should know how the committees work. Mm -hmm. And uh, their uh, schedules are always posted in various places, uh, what's up and on, on the website. So why don't you come get acquainted with the committees and see what they do. There's financial and landscape, and right. media and communications, and security, and mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things to be interested in that help to run the village. And that's where all the decisions really start. And right, are because made. those committees, they do their work, they research whatever that might be, or for the landscaping or security and that kind of thing, and they make their reports to the directors right. who then decide, accept that report and make decisions based usually, on Usually, right, on and those usually things, they right? accept the committee's report, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's a done deal. But all the work is done in committees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that, I think that's a great way for a lot of folks who may be coming to meetings and say, hey, what's going on with security? What's going on here? That's a great way. Well, go, join those committees right. and, and go to those meetings. Right, and just come to find out what's going on in the village. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a great place to go. Mm -hmm. When I first ran for the third board, I went to every single third board committee meeting <laughs> to find out how the governance worked. Mm -hmm. And to find, I found out so much about what was going on in the village. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when things are put in the globe or... Now on what's up, I I really understood what was going on because I'd gone to the meetings. Right, so you, you get know. the kind of the details, and, and I think some people just don't understand what goes into making this entire operation work. Oh, right, it's a big deal. Yeah, and it's so many people are involved, <laughs> yeah. and all the committee work and all the board right. work just to make these things uh, work right, and that's where their fees are going. The residents when they pay their fees, exactly, it's going it's going to so much of these the spending and how how it's done, and, and I think the due diligence that goes into the committees as and well. And you really get the facts by going to committees, not somebody's word about how it might have been or mm -hmm. their guess as to what happened. Mm -hmm. Be there, you know, go mm -hmm. there. And it's it's very enjoyable. And now we got updates on the ID cards. We've we've been talking about this for a little while, but the ID card uh, new system of fees has finally been approved. Yes, what happened was that people weren't returning their ID cards when they left, mm -hmm. either they're sold or you know they passed away or whatever, and those ID cards were reused by people that weren't supposed to be. <laughs> also, we missed out on some money that we should have had. So we 
as you can see from the chart in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, the new ID cards for a, a non-owner occupant cost $25. Mm -hmm. That's pretty reasonable. Very reasonable. And new cards for new resident owners or members, there's no charge. Mm -hmm. So when you come on, you get a card. Right. And new ID cards for lessees, sub-lessees, renters, or lodgers, it's included in the application processing fee. Mm -hmm. So you already have that. That's a good deal. And uh, ID mm -hmm. renewals, like for lessees and mutual 50 only, there's no charge. Mm -hmm. Now this is where we hit you. <laughs> the, next, the next one's the big one. <laughs> for non-return or failure to surrender an ID card, like for all resale, non-escrow transfer, leasing rentals, and uh, occupancy, including caregiver transactions, if the card is not returned, it's $125. Okay. And that's the biggie, and that's the new one. Mm -hmm. Also, a replacement card for just lost, stole, destroyed, or stolen cards without any report is $60. Mm -hmm. So if you lose your card and you don't have any report of it being stolen, you have no idea where it is, it's, it's 60 bucks. Right. Uh, but a replacement card for worn or unreadable cards, you turn that in and mm -hmm. you get one for free. And then finally, if you did have your wallet stolen or your purse stolen and the card was in it, you report or make a police report and you show us that there's no charge for replacing the card. Now these fees just kind of came along uh, really and the, the new decision on these fees is basically because of what seemed to be maybe abuses or just right. people just really not you know following the rules right primarily the abuses mm -hmm. if not following the rules you're supposed to turn your card in when you're done with it mm -hmm. yeah and, and they do get floated around hey here's my use my card to get in and out that kind of thing something and that's... like that yeah <laughs> my grandson wants to come right right instead of going through the hassle or the whatever it is to do it the right way people do it a little bit the wrong way and then yeah. those cards just kind of go poof sometimes yes yes <laughs> And the guards uh, don't have time always to identify you with the card. Right, right. Easy to kind of flash that or whatever yeah, it might be. Card here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how people get into Costco too. Uh, oh, oh yes, oh yes. That's a whole nother, That's a whole nother talk. Um, we got the zoning guys going on. Um, zoning is one of those things where you know cities make decisions about zoning and then they revisit those and they revisit those again over decades of time, depending on right. how communities are developing. Right. Right, and uh, our city's been zoned and rezoned several times uh, and at one time we our, our extra property for GRF was all recreational property mm -hmm. and then uh, there was a housing need so uh, this is a picture of Garden Center 1 which has among other areas has been zoned to include possible future construction of housing mm -hmm. well we're not planning to construct any housing mm -hmm in Garden Center 1, so it's going to be rezoned as an open space. Okay. And what, what it, the council's doing is simply to rezone area, certain areas to match their actual function. Mm -hmm. That actually what, what they're being used for right yeah, now. What they're kinda... doing now. And there'll be a couple of hearings in uh, the fall, so watch for them. Uh, so we'll get a public hearing before they turn in our, our plan, our mm -hmm. zoning plan mm -hmm. to the state. Now, how, how, how does the uh, Golden Rain Foundation work with the city to kind of make these things happen in a coordinated way? <laughs> we don't make them happen. The city makes them happen. Well, help you, you, you rally but for we it. Have you, to approve. you advocate, we, we, we advocate worked, for we what, you, what you're looking for, right? We work together. Uh, I mean, they, they really know what's going on in all the zones and so mm -hmm. on. But they inform us, you know, this is what we want to do. And we don't have to approve or disapprove. Mm -hmm. it's, this is information. Mm -hmm. But it also gives the residents and uh, a chance to to go to the meetings and see what's going on. The meetings at City Hall. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people will attend in the fall when these come up. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is like, "Hey, we, you know, uh, how can we make these changes?" Or maybe someone's upset with that. Is that still? Is there still time to go in and say, "Perhaps we can do something a mixed use in these areas or something like that"? Yeah, you can you can talk about it. But they explain they will explain everything about. Mm -hmm what kind of use and why they're doing it this way and that way. Mm -hmm. But everybody will have a chance to speak up, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're doing what, to protect us, you mm -hmm. know. They don't want us to have to build houses when we aren't planning to, <laughs> for <laughs> nothing, example. Nothing like, nothing like that going on. No, no. 
And now you have a, this landscape bus tour um, uh, thing. I guess Laguna Woods Village has quite the variety of trees that, uh, oh, that yes. maybe people didn't really realize the, the varietals that we have going on we here. We have, well, our, we have a forest here. We have over 33,000 trees. Kind of an urban forest. An urban <laughs> forest, and every one of, of the trees has been identified through our program. And so uh, there's a group called the Street Tree Seminar Incorporated that approached our guys and asked if they could tour the, tour the trees. <laughs> uh, and uh, the Street Tree Seminar is a chapter of the California Urban Forest Council, which is of, of California, uh, which was founded in 1968. So, I want to read to you their vision so that you'll get an idea sure. of why, uh, why this is important. Uh, Thriving and prosperous California communities transformed by healthy trees and green spaces. Together as a coalition, we are dedicated to expanding and perpetuating sustainable urban and community forests to enhance the quality of life of all Californians. So when they saw our uh, plan, our urban forest management plan, mm -hmm. they got excited because they had published this book, as you can see, right. uh, Street Trees Recommended recommended for Southern California, and they'd originally wanted to plant all the trees as an experiment, uh -huh. but they never were able to and never found the space. And when they saw our plan, they found out we had all the trees in the book. You already had it all done for we them. We were all done <laughs> right there. And so that's, that's why they approached our staff and, and wanted to do a, a tour. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do a tour in the summer with a couple of buses and okay. just go around. So they, I wanted to tell you who the members of this group are. Uh, the Street Trees Seminar It consists of professional tree managers, arborists, and associated organizations and companies. And so that's... That's well, it's a great time to advertise our wonderful community. Right. Absolutely, and you know, I guess one of the things about this community is people come here when they do. The, they look around, they see there's so much open space, they see there's so many trees, there's, and I think it's so it's such a great idea to have it so well planned in terms of being able right. walkable areas and parks and those kinds of things. And we have trees that are uh, not necessarily native to this area. Mm -hmm. And then the original planters did that on purpose, trees from everywhere that they could find. But the advantage of trees, as you probably know, is oxygen. <laughs> that does help. <laughs> <laughs> it get, well, it gives us the oxygen right. in the air. And that's perhaps why people live to their hundreds here in the village. <laughs> All the good oxygen the supplies. The oxygen supply. <laughs> And, and, and it's a big it's a big task maintaining this urban forest as as they may call it, right? It, it is, and we have uh, we have outside groups and inside groups that are doing this all the time. Mm -hmm. And tree trimming takes place in not only not just a schedule, but according to the species now. Right, right. Different times of year for different times of right. different times of because, uh, species, like you say. Right, and it's because of the uh, software that we put in uh, two or three years ago to mm -hmm. identify all the trees and find out where they are mm -hmm. and how to, how to serve them, how to treat them. And what do you appreciate most about like our urban forest here, like you say? <laughs> the shade. <laughs> <laughs> find a nice bench in the yeah, shade. The shade and, and the beauty of the flowering trees in the spring just really blows me away. Mm -hmm. And I've got one right across the street from me that is so gorgeous and I've taken several pictures of the same tree. Same tree. <laughs> now you've been involved with the Golden Rain Foundation, you've been all involved with all sorts of things here in the community. What keeps you kind of going in this world? In the world of the... In the world of these organizations? I mean, do you, do you, is there a service commitment on your part that you just feel like no, you, you want to be No, I just find it exciting to okay. get involved with what's going on and I, of course I've always liked to be in on things and uh, as a former teacher, this really kind of inspires me to, mm -hmm. uh, to explore. Mm -hmm. And I go online and research stuff regarding what we're doing, and it's, I find it very exciting. Uh -huh. And I hope that others will find it right. exciting too. And you know, you may not think your expertise is the right thing, 
you know, you, you may not have a quote business background, but that's always part of it. Mm -hmm. And you may have more of a business background than you know, but what you do have is good common sense mm -hmm. and being able to look at things and understand what's going on. And by the way, the, the staff does a wonderful job of explaining each time. Mm -hmm. This is a staff report I've just uh, marked up on the, on the, on the tour, mm -hmm. and, uh, for example. So I, we always know what's going on if we do the reading. Right. So when you first started, though, did you have any experience in any kind of governance before that? Or was it one of those things where you said, like, I'm just going to learn on the job here? No, no. I, I was, um, well, I worked for the LAUSD, and I was a, a, a representative, a union representative. So I've had a little of that. But okay. I was also on uh, other boards, Dance Alliance and uh, and I worked as an art consultant, so I'd had some experience outside of teaching, but teaching and it teaches you a great way to approach things. So whatever, and we have nurses and doctors and, you know, that not what you think of as business people right. on the board, but their logic is very important. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't, you're not flat footed in this. Right. And it's important to have a variety of folks from a variety of different perspectives on there. Then they bring right. that they bring that to the fore, right? Very important because we are, you know, we're a very diverse community, mm -hmm. and we want to have that represented on the boards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And are you going to keep serving? Is, is, is the plan well, to I've just got... keep going? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Well, I, at least for another year. <laughs> another year, yeah. What would you say to someone who's on the fence about coming in and serving on, on a foundation, serving on a committee, and those kinds of things? What would you? What would you? What advice do you give them? Well, visit first. Mm -hmm. I mean, some some people have come on the boards and have never been to a meeting, and I don't even know how they got on the board. But <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it, we we had. I would advise you to attend some committee meetings, and certainly attend the board you're interested in, in joining or thinking about joining mm -hmm. or just, just to find out what's going on. The governance here is uh, simpler than you think. We have two housing mutual, three actually, including the towers, three housing mutuals and the Golden Rain Foundation. And Golden Rain handles all the Common ground. Right, all the common area, all, you know, all the common areas, all the clubhouses, all the, the you know, all the recreational uh, material. <laughs> so that's just and get, it usually get involved. That, that usually you just get involved by coming to the meetings, and you can find their schedule on the on the web, website, stuff. which by the way will be improved by the end of the summer. Yes, we're, we're looking forward to that we're too. We're working on it. <laughs> it's being it. It's being worked on behind the scenes all the time. It's difficult. You can't just take pieces of it. You right. have to have the whole thing ready. Right. Well, it takes a long time to get everything ready. So that's what's going well, on. Joan Milliman, you are doing God's work here <laughs> at the Golden Rain Foundation. God's work. I don't <laughs> we know. appreciate all you do here no, for I'm us. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michael. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> You're watching this day. We'll be right back. Seniors fear running out of money more than death itself. And the number one mistake you can make is underestimating volatility, which can derail your retirement. For 35 years now, I've coached seniors to financial independence by using two simple rules. Never take big losses and create income along the way. It's your financial future. Call now to get a free risk analysis to ensure your investments are protected. And we'll send you our safer money system. 949-219-0692. Your smile is key to your overall health. Put it into good hands with Loberg Dental. We are restorative dentistry experts specializing in fillings, crowns, dental implants, root canals, and more. Come experience our exceptional care for yourself with a special offer for new patients. Your first exam and set of x-rays is free without insurance. Let us give you something to smile about. Visit DrLoberg.com today to make an appointment and get your free exam and x-rays. 
Welcome to Envision Eye Centers, conveniently located next to Laguna Woods. We offer cutting edge technology that meets unsurpassed service. You and your eyes are my priority. We will treat you with the utmost care and compassion. Some might offer local exams, but they'll send you on a trek for surgery. Skip the unnecessary travel. You can be confident that we will deliver the best outcome for your eyes. Schedule your consultation today and see the world clearly. Call us or visit our website. No inconvenience, just expert care. Hi, I'm Dan McEachern, and I'd like to introduce you to my son, Brandon, who's now helping us carry on our 30 plus years tradition of working in Laguna Woods. Happy to carry on my family's tradition. Yeah. As you know, we build patio enclosures and patio covers. And with summer on us, it might be a good time to give us a call. We'll, we'll do, do a, a nice, nice job, job for you. you. How do I look? You're looking really sharp, Brando. Very sharp. Yeah. And welcome back. Let's talk about some of our movies we got coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. We got some good ones. Uh, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. It's with Frances McDormand, and it's brought to us by Saddleback Memorial Care. It's going to be on 2 p.m. with subtitles, 6 p.m. without those subtitles. And uh, Guinevere Pettigrew, a middle-aged London governess, finds herself unfairly dismissed from her job. In an attempt to gain new employment, she catapults her into the glamorous world, a dizzying social whirl of an American actress and singer, and uh, so there's that movie. There you go. It's going to be on at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. on this Friday. So make sure you enjoy that one. And then on Saturday, we've got Arthur the King. That stars Mark Wahlberg, brought to us by Harvard Eye Associates. It's going to be on 2 p.m. with the subtitles, 6 p.m. without the subtitles. And it is based on the true event. And this is a really cool story. I've heard the story before. Uh, the film is the, uh, uh, in the film, there's a captain of an adventure racing team that befriends a wounded stray dog named Arthur, who accompanies the team on a grueling 435-mile endurance race through the Dominican Republic. And then there's their attempt to get Arthur back to America so he can stay with, uh, stay with them. So it's a really cool story. Let's check our weather before we head out. We got some great temperatures for this weekend, and it's going to be warmest on Saturday, so enjoy that. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. Tomorrow on the program, South Coast Singers and Sports Corner are going to be here. So we enjoy Sports Corner as always. That's going to do it uh, for all of us here at Village Television. We hope you make this day a great one. Hi, I'm John Bowser Bauman. You probably know me best as Bowser from Shanana, but I'm also president of Social Security Works PAC. And you know, when I'm in Laguna Woods, I always watch Village Television. Grease for peace.